Hey guys, today <laughs> I have brain fog. <laughs> I wanted to hop on while I was experiencing a day of brain fog to share how I experience it and what I do to not necessarily try to change it or resist it, but what, uh, what kinds of things I do to work through the brain fog. And um, I hope in this video that I share things that will help you deal with your own um, kundalini spiritually related brain fog that can arise very often on the path and can really, really just kind of hit you out of nowhere sometimes. That's what happened to me today. I haven't felt this kind of brain fog, I was telling a friend, and I truly don't know how long. <laughs> and that's when you know it's been a long time. But I also knew it would be valuable for me to come on here and share about it and kind of share my history with it and what I feel it means and how it's a good thing and what we can do to really move through it. In my experience, in my direct experience, there are two types of brain fog. There are the there is the unavoidable brain fog, <laughs> and then there is more of the self-created brain fog. The unavoidable brain fog, it happens quite often early in our awakening, especially a kundalini awakening, where you have all this energy in your head and it's running into all kinds of blocks and all your old beliefs and all your trauma and your pain and all of these things that are keeping you from embodying the truth of who you are. A lot of this, you know, the kundalini runs into a lot of our conditioned thoughts early on. And so what you have is you have so much kundalini energy really pushing through blocks in your head that it can be, it can feel literally unbearable at times to even try to think, to try to read, to try to even speak. Gosh, even today I'm sp <laughs> speaking is more difficult. Thinking is, thinking through things is really hard. Um, but not as hard as it was in the beginning when this was happening. And I just remember some days, like, I couldn't even talk to anyone. I, I like, reading and writing were so far away from <laughs> the reality I was in. And when you, would, when you do try to read, when you have this intense kundalini brain fog, you can't even, you can't even, like, absorb what you're reading, you know? It's just like, you can't take anything new in. You can't take anything new from the external reality in because there's so much processing going on in your mind that it's just like, it's pointless, right? So that's unavoidable brain fog. And this is going to happen in your spiritual awakening. It needs to happen for you to let go of your identity and obsession with thought. There needs to be a period in your awakening, probably several of them for different lengths and at different times, where your mind and your intellect and your logical brain is just literally turned off. And this is a, a mechanism of the Kundalini to have you surrender your all to let like really to let you surrender from having all of your consciousness tied up in the mind. Because when that's happening, you're just making the Kundalini's job harder because the Kundalini is up there trying to work through all of the, you know, your conditioning, your karma, your traumas, your misaligned beliefs, your limiting beliefs, your feelings of unworthiness, all this in your mind, all these beliefs. And when your imbalanced consciousness is up there battling with it and trying to like do stuff and use your mind and like tax the mind even more. It just makes the process that much more difficult for the Kundalini to, to work through. So what happens is when we're in this unavoidable, dense, awful brain fog, we're literally forced to go into the heart, to go into the body, to leave the mind, to leave thinking because thought, I remember at times I couldn't even think into the future for like one, like a day ahead, uh, even an hour ahead. My thinking was so turned off for such a long time that I remember it being a celebration when I could have like a dream and when I could fall asleep with like a fantasy, you know what I mean? How sometimes we fall asleep and we fantasize about what we want to happen in the future. Um, I, I like couldn't even do that for very, for many, many nights, many, like over a month or two. Like I couldn't even think through my life in the future. It was so bizarre. And cause I had always been so reliant on living in my imagination and getting like these artificial highs from my imagination and visualization, positive visualization is not a bad thing. I'm not saying this, 
But the Kundalini is gonna like really force you to be present. That's the big thing. The brain fog is going to bring you into presence because we cannot escape the present moment through our mind when we have unbearable brain fog. It just won't happen, it can't happen. And this is a beautiful gift that feels like a curse, especially if you were like me and you were such a mind-oriented person, you were so identified with the intellect and debating and arguing and just knowing things and reading. And, and so when this happens, it can be just terrifying. Like your whole world can feel like it's collapsing. And it is in some ways. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The deconstruction, this is a, the brain fog and the rewiring process of the mind is a huge part of the kundalini deconstruction process, the spiritual awakening deconstruction process. So in this way, it's unavoidable, inescapable, and the more you resist it, the longer it's going to take. That's a big one I can share with you guys. The more you're trying to get your mind back and really forcing yourself, like I would force myself to read, um, Anna Karenina, it's this Leo Tol it's a Tolstoy book. I was like trying to like force myself to get my intellect back before I knew I was having a Kundalini awakening. And that was only making it worse. It was only adding more of this stress and um, just exhaustion to the mind. Because the mind's already going through such a huge transformation and change. It needs literally every drop of your energy to go through this in as smooth a way as possible. So if you're still there obsessing over trying to use your intellect and your logical thinking and concentrating and trying to read and write and talk and it's just going to make it harder for you. So this is the big thing I want to stress if you're going through this unavoidable stage of brain fog is just to let go, let it happen and sink into your heart, sink into your body, sink into the present moment and just let go of needing to think, of needing to talk, of needing, you know, to... Do the things that you used to be so identified with doing. You're going through a massive transformation. It's going to benefit you and serve you. It's actually a huge gift that you're going to realize as you start getting to the other side of it because you're going to be so much more intuitive. Your extra sensory perceptions are just going to be through the roof and your intellect does come back except now it's more, more silent and it's more clear and it's more cutting and precise and it's less all over the place and disruptive in your life. So yes, your mind comes back, it just comes back with more silence and peace. So let go into this movement of the kundalini spiritual rewiring process. Let go into the brain fog. Know it, it, it too shall pass and that this is actually happening for your highest good. Quickly, at the end of this, I want to talk about avoidable brain fog. And I want to make it clear that this brain fog, this rewiring um, phase or stage, it comes and goes. The first time it comes, it might last a month or two or longer. Who knows? And then you might start, you know, feeling a little bit more balanced again. And then it might come back, you know, a month later and stay for a couple weeks. And then a few months later, it might come back and stay for a week. And sometimes you might just have it for a day or two. So don't be alarmed if this, if this rewiring and the brain fog comes and goes. Um, whenever it comes up again, just same thing. Don't resist it. Allow it to happen. I want to talk about quickly what I think happened with me and then I want to share some very practical tips that I'm going to post in the description box to work through brain fog. So last night, um, as you know, maybe you know, <laughs> I've been really sitting with cravings. So I've been turning my phone off earlier every night. I've been watching less YouTube and like just, you know, eating less for emotion, out of emotional desperation. And instead of fulfilling the craving, I've been sitting with the feelings that I've been afraid to feel. And what happened last night is I was doing this and then all of a sudden I found myself not even tired but in bed trying to go to sleep. And I think what was happening is more of an escape that I was trying to, I was trying to escape my feelings by just like, you know, trying to go to bed early. And sometimes when we do this, we'll set off our, um, our hormones a little bit. We, and on a, through a kundalini and a spiritual awakening, it's really important that you're always surrendering to the body's flow. Because if you try to force a certain schedule, whether you're trying to force yourself to stay awake when your body wants to sleep, or you're trying to force yourself to sleep when your body wants to stay awake, no matter what time this is, whatever, 
anytime you go against your body's natural rhythm, and it doesn't feel natural because it could be all over the place during an awakening. I just mean natural is when your body wants to sleep, let it sleep. When it wants to be awake, even if it's three in the morning, whatever, just let it be awake. And so when we go against this, it's going to really set us off a little bit and our hormones are going to be, our endocrine system is going to kind of be a little bit imbalanced. And this is what I think I did last night as I was sitting there with the, with the full moon energy. Um, I'm shooting this the day after the full moon. As I was sitting there with that energy, I think it just became, I just wanted to kind of leave it, <laughs> which is not, not ideal. Um, but it happens. So, this morning I woke up just a little bit off and just, I like kind of overslept and I didn't sleep at the times my body wanted to sleep. And that's another thing I wanted to point out is balancing your hormones is so crucial on this path because they can get so messed up and so all over the place. So listening to your body with, when it comes to sleep and food and just where it wants to be environment wise is such a crucial element to um, helping prevent brain fog. Like we talked about, so much of it is totally unpreventable and unavoidable, so don't worry about it. But as you get a little further along on this path, it can become a little bit more avoidable by just listening to the body's natural rhythm. And last night, as I shared, I did not do that, and so today I feel a little off, a little brain fog, but that's okay. I'm going to share a few practical tips with you right now at the end of this video um, that I'm also going to put in the description so you can look there too. The number one best tip I have for getting the hormones and the endocrine system back into alignment is two to one breathing. And what this means is you, you breathe in for four and then you breathe out for eight. And what you're doing is you're allowing the parasympathetic nervous system to re really uh, relax. And this is called a, um, I think it's called like a sinking breath and this helps you to come back into the body it helps your endocrine system to really balance so I highly recommend doing the two to one breath where you breathe in for whether it's four to five counts but on your out breath it's twice as long so eight to ten counts so if you're feeling brain fog you're feeling out of it you're feeling like you're off on a sleep schedule you're feeling you're like your hormones are just everywhere do this breath, it's the number one tip I can offer. And I'm gonna put a yoga video down below by this amazing yoga teacher, um, and she does beautiful yin yoga classes, and she, at the beginning of this video, which is all about balancing the endocrine system, at the beginning of the video, she takes us through the two to one breath. The other tips are meditation, huge, huge for anything on this path, and um, I mean, that's really it. If you guys can just do those things, if you can do the two to one breath, if you can do yin yoga or any other form of yoga, hatha yoga is great. And if you can meditate, this is going to help you to get back into alignment the quickest and for your body to come back into a state of balance. Um, and that's what I'm doing today and it has been helping. So that's the video on brain fog. I hope this helps you guys. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel and subscribing. I'm offering coaching for anyone going through anything um, difficult with kundalini or spiritual. Um, so that is available and that is also in a link in the description. I really look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Um, thanks again for watching and namaste.